Audi has just revealed the new version of the e-tron. Basically, it's like a smaller version of an Audi Q5. New specs, new prices. Is it worth your time looking at this electrified Audi? Is it good value? Is it something you should consider? Well, I'm going to give you my opinion on this. I've got a pretty strong opinion as well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Pretty good chance you can look at one of these EVs, by the way, at the EV show in Melbourne on this weekend on, well, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Audi's e-tron. Is it worth your time considering? Well, there's a new updated version. They're going to be saying this pretty much every year. Very different to internal combustion vehicles that barely change year over year. The new version has more range more performance, and it costs about the same. So how much does it cost? Well, it's around 50,000 US dollars. That's the base model specification, by the way, in Europe. It starts at 56,000 US dollars. So that's 53,000 euros. In Australia, we don't have a price for it here yet. It doesn't exist here yet, but a comparable car is something like the BMW iX, and that costs around 85,000 Australian dollars, so around 60,000 US dollars. So you can, you can expect a price around there for the e-tron when it does come to Australia. And this is where the model we'll be getting. This is the 2024 Audi Q4 e-tron. It's the Euro lineup we're going to look at here, but this is pretty much the same specifications we're going to see everywhere worldwide for 2024. It's got a few changes to the existing model. Does that make it worth your time? Honest, my first real introduction to this car is when I saw CarWow do a test. They actually looked at a bunch of, they looked at about four different electric cars. One was a Tesla Model Y, one was the Q4 e-tron. Now I thought the Q4 e-tron was comparable in size to a Tesla Model Y, but it turned out it wasn't. It's actually quite a lot smaller. And that's what shocked me. The boot size of the Q4 e-tron gives you an idea that this is actually a significantly smaller car than a Model Y. In fact, it's around about 4.5 meters long, whereas the Model Y is in the next size up of car. So they're probably not directly comparable for a lot of buyers, but it's still worth having that as a yardstick in terms of pricing. It costs about the same as a Tesla Model Y long range. So does that mean it's worth your time considering? Well, the new version is definitely better than the previous version. If you're comparing the previous version to the existing Model Y, I think you'd be a little bit crazy to make that purchase decision. This new version though, it's definitely an improvement. What's better? It's got more range, it's got better efficiency, it's got better charging, and it's got better suspension. Plus it's got a new sound signature, I'm not a fan of sound in EVs, but some people are. And it's got more standard kit. It's got a wider range of functions. The driver assistance systems are said to work better as well. So quite a lot of improvements. One of the changes that's been made is to the optional, you do have to pay for this, adaptive cruise assist. The Q4 e-tron now has the ability to do lane changes at speeds above 56 miles per hour on a highway. That's if you purchase optional adaptive cruise assist. So what are the other changes? Well, the big differences here. Okay, charging. It charges from 10 to 80%, say Audi, in 28 minutes. Now, these numbers that companies come out with, they're just nonsense because that's like, which charger did you use to charge at that speed? Where was it? Um, what, was the, what was the actual brand of charger? Who knows? So what really matters is the actual charging speed. And that is 175 kilowatt. About the same charging as the standard range Tesla Model Y, but the equivalent Model Y, the long range version, or say an equivalent a BMW iX1, the Model Y charges at 250 kilowatt charging speed. So charging speeds are not bad actually, but not quite as good as some other models of car. Here's another example, Hyundai Ionic 5, 350 kilowatt charging speed. So about half the charging speed of the Ionic 5, but the real world charging is quite different. Ionic 5 in the real world is not gonna charge anywhere near those speeds. So probably similar speeds, not too far off, maybe about 20 to 30% real world slower than charging in an EV6, Kia EV6 and an Ionic 5. So DC charging. Apparently that's been improved versus the old model. The battery pack, it's the same size. Hasn't been improved, but the efficiency has. How big is the battery? What's well, a 77 kilowatt hour? Battery is 82 kilowatts in real size, but the actual usable capacity is 77. It's got dual motor variants. The base model is not dual motor, but the dual motor variants have that 175 kilowatt charging. The base model's charging speed, in my opinion, is not good enough for a car costing this much. It's 135 kilowatt charging speed maximum for the base model version. So you're looking at a 50 plus thousand, so 55,000 US dollar car that charges 135 kilowatt. I think that's going to be a problem for buyers. I think they're going to see that and go, what? But anyway, what do you think? Let me know what your thoughts are.
Now, one other update I think is a little bit controversial here. Audi say it'll make the car better. I think owners might not agree. The update to this Q4 e-tron, it means has a battery protection function that automatically limits the charge level to 80% to extend battery life. Now, is that something you'd want? Do you want to actually reduce your charging by 20%? Not really. I mean, there's other electric cars with more range than this that use LFP batteries that don't need that sort of um, limited battery thing. And the other thing is um, there's a lot of um, EV owners that have charged their EVs to you know 90 plus percent many times and have very small amounts of battery degradation. So if Audi is saying you need to use this function in order to maintain the life of your battery pack, it, it does raise a few questions about how good the battery itself actually is. It may be good, or maybe Audi is just Audi's playing it safe here, or maybe they have had some issues. I don't know. What's the power? Well, it's got a new motor, 282 horsepower. So that's quite a bit of power. That's 210 kilowatt. That's the standard range model, the cheapest model that comes in all variants. Now, if you pay a bit more, you can get the all-wheel drive version, which comes with more power than that. But anyway, about the similar power figures to the standard range Tesla Model Y. But of course, with the equivalent Model Y, which is the long range version, it has about 40% less power. Now, what's the range? Well, here the car is actually quite a big, imp this is the big improvement here with this car. It's probably the one really redeeming feature, I think. It's got 349 miles of range on the WLTP cycle. That's an increase of around 17 miles versus the previous model. Previous model had 332 miles. So that's pretty impressive. And how did Audi actually achieve that improvement in range? They say it's due to the new electric motors optimized thermal management, which enhances efficiency. Now, I've never heard of an electric motor having optimized thermal management. Maybe this is like a press release faux pas where they meant that the battery has better thermal management. Anyway, that's what Audi said. Acceleration also improves because of the more powerful motor. And it means the e-tron can go from 0 to 62 miles an hour or 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.7 seconds. So a similar speed to a base model Tesla Model Y, a base model Tesla Model 3. Uh, but like I said, this is a bit more expensive than those. So that performance is maybe adequate, but maybe not what you quite expect of something that costs this much. Anyway, if you get the dual motor version, it can go just a tiny bit faster, 6.6 .6 seconds. But if you get the more powerful Q455 e-tron Quattro, that can do it in 5.4 seconds because it has a total of 250 kilowatt, which is 335 horsepower. Top speed on all versions is a relatively slowish 112 miles an hour. Not to say that's slow really, but I mean, I think if you're gonna get the Audi Q4 55 e-tron quattro you're going to pay they're quite expensive they're closer to the hundred thousand dollar figure you'd probably want to maybe be able to go a bit faster than 112 miles an hour anyway what else has been improved well apparently the suspension has been significantly improved it's got new tuning that's said to result in a more balanced setup bringing greater comfort driving fun and stability as well as improved steering response and tighter load control this applies to the standard sport suspension or suspension with dampers control so basically there's three different types of suspension a little confusing but three different types and apparently all three of them have better improved ride handling and other qualities now, Audi say they've made some other improvements to the seats. Um, they work better. Apparently, the infotainment system has been improved as well. Plus, when it comes to optional equipment, they're willing to sell you lots of stuff. Now, I'm not going to go into the options, but one of the options you can get is 21-inch wheels in a bronze matte 5W spoke star design. Uh, Matrix LED headlights, you can get those as well. Now, personally, I don't recommend getting big wheels like that on a, a vehicle unless you're really, really keen to go maximize looks because if you do get those bigger wheels, of course, your range will be pretty drastically reduced, probably by about 10 to 15%. Now, also optional, you can actually pay to get noise. Um, Audi will give you the option to pay more money and you can get what they call character sound. This will distinguish the Q4 e-tron from other Audis and other EVs. Now, Porsche has recently tried to actually patent EV sound and a certain sound from their EVs and their patents have been rebuked, they've been knocked back. Um, patent office in the United States said, this is nonsense, uh, no thank you, Porsche. But anyway, if you love certain special sounds, Audi will allow you to pay for that sound um, and it sounds a bit crazy to me, but... Anyway, Audi has a mandatory acoustic vehicle alerting system. And that's the, the reason for these is in Europe, they've been mandated because 
basically Europeans say, because EVs are almost completely quiet, pedestrians can't hear them, they cross the road, they get hit. So EVs now in Europe have to have a noise at up to 15.5 miles an hour, and that's part of the character sound, they say. So is this an EV I recommend? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, I think the BMW iX1, which it does have its own flaws, it's not a ground up purpose-built EV, is still a better option than this. But that said, if it were me, I wouldn't look at either of those cars. I'd probably look at something like a similarly sized, in fact, slightly bigger Hyundai Ioniq 5. They're selling really well in the US right now. Or a Tesla Model Y, like I said. Either of those two would, in my opinion, be a better car than this and cost you less money. Now, of course, it doesn't have the Audi Premium badge, but your experience in day-to-day -day driving, in actual charging, and all well, in most areas will be significantly better. And that, in my opinion, represents luxury. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.